around with never Me and you, sign my sign to the Soviet spinner And they just fly the ground with beautiful feathers Today's I'm feeling really down, she will pick me up When I fail, she will say to never give up The shark in the water, but I'm trapped in the battlefield Nothing can stop me from the way that I feel Got me up with you, and for a way to keep forever Bearing that I will be your team My sweet soul survive a straight from the south side For you, my lady, I will always have time My treasure, silver and gold, my shiny diamond Ooh, Ben Ray, oh
<laughs> you are an obedient child. Yeah, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day three and the final day of the Pacific Arts Summit 2022. Okay, so uh, who went to the Vane Collective party last night? Put your hands up. Oh, I see one honest person in the back row, but at, le at least you're here. Um, as we finished the day yesterday, um, and for those who were able to head across to the Bruise Bar just to have a bit of a relax and a reflection uh, on the day, um, I was thinking about uh, how grateful I am, how grateful I am for a Pacific arts sector that's committed and passionate and who are thinking about not just yourselves and your own arts practice, but how we have a flourishing Pacific arts sector going forward and how grateful I am that people have taken pretty much three days out of their busy lives to be here to support us as Creative New Zealand to better support you. Um, so I'm really grateful for your generosity and that's how I wanted to start this morning by uh, thinking about what I am grateful for and um, to just run down um, what we would like to do this morning before we uh, finish it for the day at lunchtime and give those who are staying on tonight for our Arts Pacifica Awards uh, a bit of a chance to rest and um, zhuzh yourselves up and come back tonight to celebrate Pacific Arts success in our eight winners. So this morning, what we thought we would do is that um, myself and my Arts Council colleagues, who have the responsibility to make the final decision around the shape of the strategy going forward, we just wanted to share really briefly with you what we have been hearing over the last couple of days, and perhaps what we haven't been hearing as well. Uh, once we've done that, um, the team are just uh, furiously putting together, I guess, the high-level themes that have come out of the workshops yesterday and some of the conversations on day one as well. So reflecting those back to you and giving you a chance to think, are those really the big things or are there things that have been missed? And then the third thing we want to do, and this is really just, again, to make the most of having you all in the room together, is that one of the things that we haven't been hearing much about, we'll, we'll put it this way, we've been hearing lots about what, you know, what you would like to see CNZ do, what you would like to do going forward, what you would like us to do together, and that's been really good. We'd like to have a conversation about our relationship and how. What are the ways of actually working together to get those things done that you want to see? So that'll be the, the third conversation and that will involve you. Then there'll be a chance to hear back some of those ideas before we wrap up with what happens after this and send you safely on your way. So that is the plan. So, you know, we've, um, we've got a few less people here than we had yesterday. We know a few people have headed home, and that's okay. Um, and I think, team, do we still have our audience beaming in from um, virtual reality land? So good morning to all of you out there who are coming in via Zono. Thank you again for your, your attention to, to this. So I'm going to start. Um, I'm actually going to start at this end because this person at this end is pointing to that end. So I'm starting at this end close to me with Sister Fetu. And so um, she's going to be two questions. So here's the first one. We'll hear from all of you. And then there'll be a second, second one. So the first thing is, tell me a couple of things about what you have been hearing from the discussions. Here we go. Uh, Talofalava, Tena Tato. 
what have I been hearing? What haven't I been hearing? Um, it's fortunate that uh, as you grow older, it's your ears and your feet that grow, that keep growing. And I tell you what, my ears and my feet have been getting a good workout. So the rangatahi that were in one of the sessions that I was present in, they asked for more uh, cultural guidance from our kaumatua, and they asked for more accessibility to sit down with the elders, to listen to them, and to help them with their language so they could inform their new art forms that they were engaging in. Is that right, Kotero? You were the one that raised it with us? That's what she asked yesterday. And that was one of the things that I found very interesting, that these young ones would ask for that. So uh, perhaps they felt that there were you know, not so many older people there, and they felt OK to ask that. So that was one of the things I heard. Thank and you. your second question? We'll come, we'll come back around to that. So, oh. yep. Thanks, Fitzy. Ani. Uh, one of the things that I've heard from all these notes, um, I think this is what I'm summarizing and why Carve translated it, is the concern that our arts exist in a bubble. There's been a call for us to work more across with other ministries. And I think what that's speaking to is a better understanding and transparency about the ecology of the arts. And where CNZ sits within it, where our limitations are, and say just on a kind of grassroots level funding, if we don't fund you of redirecting people to other avenues that may not be in CNZ, may not be the arts. So I'm hearing a bit of that, I think. Yeah, and it's a really interesting point. So, you know, 53 years ago when the Arts Council started, right, pretty much they were the only show in town in terms of investing in the arts. That has changed. So one of the things we need to be asking ourselves is, where do we sit in the bigger picture? And what is our role in terms of working with the other partners who also have an interest in the arts? Yeah, thanks, Arnie. Robin. Uh, kia ora. Good morning. Uh, just to build on what Ani said about the involvement of other ministries and other organisations, um, my attention was focused mostly on the Pacific Tour Group, who are a pretty amazing bunch of people. And we talked a bit about um, the complexity, really, of, of the worlds that we all inhabit. And one of the things that I think was really important was was the discussion around co-design and capacity building and um, and accessibility, which is very broad and wide and deep. And in terms of co-design for disabled people, I think it's really about um, <clears throat> being able, having their voices at the table and, um, and for them to be able to safely say what they need to, to work as artists, and some of it might be a bit different from what other people need. So those sorts of things like, I mean, access is pretty important when it comes to co-design, but there are a number of other factors which I won't go into here because I could go on all morning. So thank you. Thanks, Robin. And so when we pass the time over to you to discuss what are the ways that you want to work together, what do you want the relationship to be, Robin's picked up the point about the importance of people feeling safe. So what does safe look like? That those are the kind of conversations we want you to have. So, John. Um, yeah, so the things that I heard yesterday were mainly around sort of connection, um, space, metaphorical and physical, um, and growth. But the, a big one was around relationships, and so uh, one thing that I really picked up from listening in on the groups was the question of who gets to be in the room um, and how do we make sure that the voices of people who aren't in the room are also heard. So I think a really yeah, um, fantastic thing that we can put our minds to together this morning would be around how we, how we can do that. Um, yeah, so that for me that was a, re a really big takeaway. Thanks, John. And I was um, in, in that line. I was taken by the point I think that Nina raised about us needing more Pacific people in governance. 
and it made my heart sing because, you know, it can be a pretty lonely place. But it's really important that we have our people at every level of decision making. And, um, you know, I'm just waiting for the rest of New Zealand to realise that we've got a Samoan minister and a Samoan CEO of the head of, you know, Ministry of Arts and Culture and a Cook Island Chair of the Arts Council. And how we together with the sector make the difference that we want to make. Benita, and I just wanted to, because um, Benita, you didn't get a chance to introduce yourself yesterday, so I'm going to ask you to do that first and then just share your reflections from what you heard as you came in. Indeed, my privilege and honour to be here amongst my Pacifica cousins, my cousins and brothers and sisters from Te Moana Nui Akiwa. Um, I admittedly arrived very late yesterday afternoon and I apologise for that, but some of the closing quarter or that I was privileged enough to hear, uh, I talked about the, I, I heard about the pride in being able to carry on these, these art forms uh, multi-generationally, so we're seeing generations of your, of your uh, ainga, of your whanau, of your ohana coming through with these wonderful skills. Uh, and being able to embed those for future generations. Um, I'm also really interested in knowing how you see your relationship with tangata whenua and how we can afi, how we can manaki and how we can move forward together rather than uh, separately or competing. But as, uh, you know, as cousins, we've got to do this together because we're all, we all have those endangered art forms. So. Kia ora tato. Kia ora Benita. And I think um, I was thinking in the panel when the facilitators reported back yesterday, some of the, the conversation that Doug Ma and Emilani shared in that respect. Okay, so that's what you heard. What I want to know is going forward, for you as members of our Arts Council, what are your expectations about our relationship with the Pacific arts sector? What would a successful relationship look like for each of you? So starting back here with Fetu. What would a successful relationship with you guys and us and all of us together look like? I think I would like it to be for myself. I would like us moving forward to be honest. And when I say honest, um, I mean that uh, when we work together, that we put all our cards on the table together that we say we know what our challenges are facing each other and that we share those challenges and they're not hidden from each other. So that is a thing that uh, I would like for myself moving forward. Yeah, I think it's a really good point because we're really clear, um, you know, we are an instrument of the crown, right? And we know that when people look at us, despite the fact that we celebrate having now such a great, huge Pacific team, we know that people look at us as the crown, as the government. And that, that's part of our reality. That is why we're here. But uh, part of the benefit of having our people you know, inside the crown is that we start to change systems and processes and relationships. And for me, the big thing is trust. How much do you trust us? So I'm going to move on to Annie. Uh, in terms of the relationship with with us, with CNZ, I'd like to see that strengthened. And I think the reality is for some people that this summit is their first engagement with CNZ, with some of our Pacific Art staff, with our council, despite some of us being new. And maybe part of that is privileging that kanohi to kanohi um, for our youth as well that this is not the last time we should be seeing each other. If there is someone um, here that is in a spot that you want to be in, I encourage you to reach out to have that cup of tea because that's the ways in which we've been taught um, that I think is maybe a bit lost. So I want to see real strengthened relationships that are enduring um, beyond this. 
So when you have your conversation, again, I want to hear from you, what does a strengthened relationship look like? Robin. Um, for me, I think the relationship, um, it's important that it's open and that it's accessible. Um, and that might mean that we as an organisation have some things to learn and I expect to be to that we will be told what we have to learn and how what would work for others, uh, for everyone, so that, the so that the relationship is open and honest, but, but particularly that it's accessible, so that people feel it's easy to talk to us and to work with us, um, and, and in, in all the different ways, not just in terms of applying for funding, but, but the general conversations that you might have with us as an organisation. And that might, might mean we have to learn a bit, but that's fine too. Thank you. One of the conversations I was having with someone yesterday is that, you know, contestable funding is not a great basis for a good relationship, right? And so the question I've got is, so what does it look like if we don't have contestable funding? What would that be like? John. That's a great question. Um, yeah, so I'd, I'd probably... Um, kind of support what Fitu said, really. So the brutal honesty that I get at family gatherings um, is <laughs> welcomed, right? And um, so for me, one of the things that um, sort of keeps me up at night um, is that we, can't, it, you know, as, a, as an arts council, we can't do everything that we'd want to do. And um, being able to have a... Um, a trusting and open and honest conversation about all the things that we aspire for together and our mutual challenges. Um, and talking about that uh, together and honestly is, is probably the, the main thing that I'd be looking for. Yeah, so here's an example of one of those mutual challenges um, we've got that you may or may not know about. So the bulk of our funding comes from lotto tickets and the smaller part of our funding comes from government. So, you know, every week we pray that the Powerball doesn't get struck because that'll mean more money for the arts. So it's not a great basis on which to plan, right? And that's the current structure that we have. And that's a challenge for all of us. The challenge is not who gets the CNZ money. The challenge is, is there enough money for the arts in total? Benita. Oh, he partai pai tira, Karen. Um, I'm really interested to know, and it's something that I've started trying to look at CNZ through a Te Ao Māori lens, but I'd like to really understand through a Te Ao Pacifica lens how we decolonise the STEM system. Because it hasn't worked for any of us for the last 50 years. Uh, how do we now, with a team of, of much more diverse people, uh, trying to manage those systems? How do we decolonise those systems? How do we make them more responsive to our whakaaro, our ways of being, our ways of uh, working together, the way we build relationships? So how do we tell CNZ what we need, rather than CNZ saying, this is what we've got and this is what you have to do to get it? I'm really keen to know how we flip that on its head. Awesome. So for me, um, I'd like to think going forward that we flip things on their head and we start with what are the relationships we want to have and we build the processes around that. And we've currently got a system that works the other way for a whole number of good reasons, right? Because this is still your public taxpayers' money and there's still an interest in making sure that that money gets shared equitably and fairly and transparently. So that's how we've ended up with the process that we have to date. And it hasn't been wrong, um, but I feel sometimes it's been at the expense of the relationships that we, we want to have with each other for the sector as a whole. And I'm really interested in how collectively, you know, how, how interested are we in the collective? Uh, because We've each got our own interests in our own projects, our own art forms, our own genres, our own communities, and that's great. That's, that's part of the, the joy of being part of the Pacific Arts community. 
How much are we prepared to support each other? I had a few interesting words with um, someone who's not here in the audience now, so I can tell the story, um, at the bar the other night, who was um, pointing out to me, I think um, this might be Emilani's tool, you know, to, uh, term, you know, with critical love. He was sharing with me his critical love of uh, CNZ in very loud terms. Um, and this was a person who's a successful recipient of ours, right? Um, just pointing out what he, he did like and didn't like about the process, so it's good to get feedback. And you know, and how, what was fair and wasn't unfair. And I said to him, yeah, that's, those are, they're all very relevant points. So if you think it's not fair, are you prepared to take 20% of your money and give it to other people? And so this is one of the questions for us, right? How, how, how much are we prepared to really share the sector, the strengthening of the sector, the sec sector, that's a Cook Island word, the strengthening of the sector across all of us so everybody benefits. And th these are the mutual challenges and exciting opportunities that we have going forward. And I just want to come back to John's uh, reference to brutal honesty. So for those of you who weren't here yesterday, he shared the stories about the joy of the brutal honesty of his aunties and telling him exactly what they think about his life choices. And I went, gee, I didn't know you were a Cook Islander. Yeah. Dietary choices as well, <laughs> clothing choices. Um, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, look, so thank you to my colleagues just for your, um, your initial thoughts because there's been a lot to take in um, over the last two and a half days and we've got some real work to do to unpack the richness of the discussions um, to really um, pay them due attention. So next, um, I'm just going to get up on the slides. Thank you, team. Just a quick high-level summary of what we've been hearing as a team. Next slide, please. Oh, have I got the thing? There we go. Okay. Bearing in mind, of course, these are just initial, uh, some of the thoughts that bubbled up to the surface from yesterday. So the first one is around reconnecting, reconnecting with the Pacific Arts community. So. In the 2018 summit, one of the clear messages we heard was, it has been too long between drinks, it has been eight years. And for some people it was eight years of building up pent up frustration and views and thoughts and things they wanted to share, and we just left it for a very long time. So we didn't want to do that, we heard that, and that's why we're having it um, you know, four years from when we started, and uh, what a joy it, it's been for us. So that importance of, yes, connecting, but regularly reconnecting. And whether that's at a big summit like this, or whether that's on a one-to-one -one basis, more regularity. The second theme we heard is around the supporting of young artists to develop and grow. And the challenge was thrown out, why aren't there more young people here? I think the real challenge is actually, have we actually asked young people how do they want to engage? The third theme that came out uh, really strong was the acknowledging and the uplifting of tour arts. And um, Patsy, one of the, your comments that is ringing in my ears is about not siloing us. And um, really understanding, and I'm picking up on Robin's point, you know, when we say things like co-design, what does that mean to us? And our responsibility to hear and adapt to those processes. The fourth big one that came out quite regularly from your conversations was growing leadership from a Pacific perspective. And I think that might have been where the governance comment was, was raised. And that's leadership at all levels. Number five there was making it easier to access support. So I suppose one of the things that concerns me is that we heard that quite strongly in 2018, right? And it's still an issue in 2022. So that does make me worried uh, a little bit about what is it that we, we still aren't doing. 
next one, uh, the need to build an investment into Pacific Arts. So again, something that we heard last time and we think we have built more investment since 2018. Um, but I'm really interested into, you know, to what end? If we're going to build investment, how much is enough? Um, because I do worry sometimes that we're tempted to say more, more, more of everything. But is those, are those the right things? And finally, growing the Pacific Arts Kaupapa and Mana Pacifica, which is being able to reflect our values into the processes that happen in our organisation. And that's ours collectively. So just, as I said, very high level points that floated up to the surface from yesterday. And underneath those are all the pages and pages and whiteboard sheets that we have from your various discussions. And um, that'll be the job of the team to go back through all of those to really extract all of the nuances sitting behind those main things from yesterday. So the next thing, having seen that, we want to put it back to you as a, as a group, as a collective group, to talk about amongst yourselves going forward, having talked about all the what yesterday, what you want to see happen, we want to talk about the how. How do you want the relationship to be with Creative New Zealand? What will that look like for you? What don't you want it to be like? You know, you know you've shared some of that in bits and pieces. So we want to give you the next half an hour to form into whichever groups you would like to, whether they're peers, whether they're bigger groups. And we want you to have the discussion amongst yourselves what do you want the relationship to be like with Creative New Zealand? What are the ways that you want us all to work together? Is that clear? That's all good? So I'm just doing a time check. It's uh, 10.32. Let's go through to 11 o'clock. Uh, and uh, we'll have a little break there, have a cup of tea. And then we'll come back after that and we'll hear Perhaps one idea from each, each group, just depending on how many groups we have, but we'll have a chance to share some of the thinking um, before we wrap up with next steps. Sure. So I'm going to... Kavik is going to come up here to help just get us a bit better organised than what I'm doing, and uh, I'll pass it over to him. Thank you, Karen. Aloha, good morning everybody. Okay, yesterday we did such a great job of being so calm and careful, and I know you guys are all very excited to talk to each other, but we're gonna break up into smaller groups today. We're not gonna to have to move the chairs too much, so if I can get these, one, two, three, these first three rows here to come together, come close, um, and then that group, you guys look like a solid group, the last two rows, um, and those groups, if you guys can see me <laughs> while they're taking selfies and photos, um, those three on this side, and then those two groups in the back, if you guys can come back together, we have the questions on the screen. Don't be shy. Come on. I know breakfast was good, but you know, get, let's get going. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> no, no, they can just move bodies. You don't have to move all the chairs. You can just come together. There should be about 15 people per group or so. Safita, perfect example. Everybody be like Safita. Kia ora. And if you guys want to make a group against the wall with the Cook Island Mamas, that is okay as well.
Eyes, let me see your eyes, so I know you're paying attention. Eyes, 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 eyes. See, these people are still talking Ooh, deep in the Talanoa. Still going. So baby will give the five gifts Perfect. out. Yep. The report bag. We're going to just um, prep them, they'll do stretches, and then... They will do stretches first. Yeah. 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 Okay, everybody, we're going to wrap up the session. I hope um, you have nominated one village leader from your group to represent your circle, your po'ai. And um, looking at this... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So wrap it up. Wrap it up like Christmas presents. Wrap it up. And um, we're going to quickly make sure you have your bullet points and your facts from your group. And... Um, in about one minute, we're gonna do some stretches to get us all awake again so we can get our brains going. So um, final point, write them down. Nominate your village leader. How many seconds do we have? One, two, three. All right, well. Okay, village leaders, let me see you. If you can stand up and wave so we can see who you are. What? Oh, multiple leaders. You guys got three leaders, one small circle. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Okay, one. Yep. Two. Who is it? You guys have five people. Okay, one. I have it. Testing. Yep. Okay, village leaders, thank you very much. You guys are also going to be our first demonstrations for uh, stretches today. <laughs> but um, Ali's going to take us away on some stretches. Fakravalayatu, everyone. Good morning. Uh, we'll just have a round of applause for everyone for their last breakout session. Thank you for your talanoa. We're just going to uh, get everyone, if you can, standing up. We'll just go through a couple of uh, breathing exercises, some stretches. I know it's been a long three days. It's wonderful that everyone could join this morning for our breakfast. All right. Big breath in. And release out. And again, in. Holding and release down. And one more time in. Reaching all the way up. Oh, give it a good stretch and release down. We'll go one more time. And up to the sky, reach high. And just release all the way down and shake it out. Everyone, shake it out. Can I get a hey, hey, ho? <laughs> Can I get a chee <laughs> Can I get a yeah, yeah? <laughs> and one more breath in together. And down. And shake it all out. And give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you, everyone. There is some cup of tea and uh, some refreshments back there if you want to break before we head into our Talanoa again. Thank you. Okay, team, we have homework to do. So five minutes, five minutes, go get your cup of tea and then we're going to give feedback to these questions, okay? Five minutes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah.
I can see, I can see them. Hello. Malo Elele, could we have all the village leaders to the side of stage, please? We're about to do the presentation. Thank you. Village coordinators. <laughs> but there. Are they coming up here? There is a prize. Yeah. Village coordinators, please make your way to the front of the stage. Oh. Hi. We have two, we have three. Is, are those all the village coordinators? Ah. Got one more chair. Yeah. It's fine. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Having a smoke. Oh, oh Carlo. Thank you. <laughs> In the middle. <sighs> Okay, Fana, it comes back to the very important questions. Our Arts Council are present in the room. We've got lots of knowledge holders, uh, artists, visionaries, um, and of course, CNZ staff here to listen to what you have to say. So the question, um, oh, if you haven't, you guys have mics. I think everybody knows you by now, but if not, really quick 30 second intro, okay? Um, what ways do you want to work with Creative New Zealand? So if I can start with gentlemen to my right. We're all on your right. <laughs> right number two, number three. Be elaborative, sir. Me? Yes. Bagalo balaya to game of war game dolosi. I am a financial stripper. Uh, that means every time in my family someone dies, someone gets married, they strip me financially. Um, I do apologize. Lucy, you're not getting any of my money. But I am only a mouthpiece for many a mouse in that corner. And one. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm also missing my front teeth. Happily married, don't care about it anymore. Um, but the collective uh, output, I guess, that came up from our group is we recognize that 
uh, CNZ uh, not only does it not have all the answers, we also know that it does not have all the money. Uh, and a lot of the things that we need done uh, cannot all be achieved as one va'a. So one of the things that we tap to, uh, into as a group is we recognize our ngafa, our connectivity. And so we look at CNZ as a door opener. If we cannot access the current limited millions and millions of dollars that you are assigned to feed the entire Moana, can we also look at relationships? Uh, that means if we come to you, can you run workshops so that not only can we be artists, but how can we be sustainable? Uh, we all want to be artists, but we also want to live through our arts. Unfortunately, at the moment, we're quite heavily dependent on grants and funds. And what it does there, it tells us that we're still kind of colonizing mentality, that we're depending on the handout. But yet, we're the people who navigated the Moana. We were actually the first people who could read or write because we could read the stars and read the moon. So we would like the opportunity to continue that entrepreneurship spirit. And we can only do that by having our world beyond creative New Zealand. That is being connected to Hawaii, the Tangata of Palau, what are their communities doing? Uh, we once asked a question yesterday, how can we value our art? Well, no one else will value our art but us. And the only way we can have a greater group of people to add greater value to your art is growing our accessibility, which is something that is shared by both uh, able body communities and our Tangata Sa'ili Malo, who are Pacific people with a disability. So that is a nutshell, a response to what our group had to say. If I didn't say it right, forgive me. As I said yesterday, English is my fifth language. Kere kere aloha mai. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Oh, collaboration. Thank you. Um, just because I, I just want to follow on from that point, and in terms of um, you know us not wanting to have a dependent relationship on Creative New Zealand, and I wonder if I could just invite Matt to talk to us a bit about some of the conversations that you've been having over the last couple of days, because I will not be able to sum that up as, as beautifully. Um, but it definitely speaks to this conversation, I think. Welcome, Matt, to the stage. Um, look, um, I'm here to advocate on behalf of a word of some words that have just not been uttered over the past few days, which is like we keep hearing central government funding, central government funding, central government funding, disrupt, 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 disrupt alternative models. The opposite to central government funding is decentralized funding. And decentralized funding is a term, there's some terms that you might, might have heard of, which is blockchain and web 3.0. These are the latest technologies and if you do your due diligence on it, a lot of people kind of roll their eyes, oh, that's that Bitcoin, that's that cryptocurrency, that's that theoretical thing. Tuvalu, the fastest sinking nation on the planet, have completely rewritten their government contracts and financial system on the blockchain. Um, and that's saying something. Like, think about that metaphor. They've got the most to lose, and they're going all in on this technology. Um, people go, oh, Bitcoin, crypto, that's not a real thing. Google, central bank digital currency, Jacinda's getting ready to roll one out. Every government around the world is getting ready to roll out these central bank digital currencies. And so when we talk about these complaints about central, fund, um, central funding models and disrupting that, that already exists. And I think that this is a, uh, an opportunity for us as Pacifica to kind of really utilize blockchain in the same way we utilize Senate. Synet for us was taking a raw material and we supplied the textiles industry, architecture industry, boat building industry, our food industry, one raw material and we are just so good at 
multi-purposing these things across a variety of industries. Blockchain is not something for digital artists. You will be able to allocate um, digital scarcity to tokenized physical objects if you're a heritage artist. I don't have enough time to cover it all, but another way you can think about it is in terms of the term Web 3.0. Web 1.0 was the version of the internet where you could only go onto it and consume the information, read it. We are currently in Web 2.0, which is where you can go to the internet, read the information and the stories, but also put your stories onto the internet, but it's owned by the centralization, it's owned by Facebook, it's owned by YouTube. Web 3.0 is where you can go onto the internet, read, write, but own. Own the content, own the stories, track that di digital dollar. Four years ago, we, there was some complaints about, oh, a lot of the, the money that we're using to fund our art comes from pokies. It comes from gambling. And so we are people of the moana, like provenance, where the value comes from is important to us. Uh, Ie Konga, in Fa Samoa, it accumulates its provenance because it goes through that wedding, then that funeral, and it gains its intrinsic value. With cryptocurrency and blockchain, you can track where your dollar comes from. And you can say, I do not want to be making my art through that system, but I agree with that system. It's taking all the power that's at the top of the centralized funding models and distributing it back to the community, which is a village moana mentality. So I'd just like to kind of summarize that all up by going back to the start of our conference because there were some words that um, Winnie Luomanubao shared, which was um, a quote from Carla Miller, you know, dare to fish beyond the corals of this reef. And I'd like to use that as a provocation for us to dare to fund our art beyond the corals of these centralized funding systems and give the power back to our communities. Because one way or another, our young ones that we're advocating on behalf of, they're, going to, they're already using this. People are using TikTok. People have no idea the back end of TikTok is blockchain. They're using Audius that bypasses all the things that APRA currently does, publishing and licensing. The whole system is changing. When Russia got cut off from the world's SWIFT system, they go, okay, we're only gonna take ruble and cryptocurrency. When the truckers in Canada got blocked off because the government didn't agree with them, they were like, cool, we're taking cryptocurrency. Whether people like it or not, it is coming. Every banker, every government around the world is moving to these systems. So as people that pride ourselves on the innovation and daring to go into the unknown, I just really encourage all of us to adopt these words because it just seems like, once again, we're late to the party. We're talking about systems that we've inherited. This is the first time in history that the, we, have, we the public have front run the institutions in terms of this technology and as people of the Moana, we absolutely need to take that innovative spirit and get into the space. So please, um, I just encourage everyone to do your due diligence on Web 3.0 blockchain. So. Yeah. Mahalo Fayumu. Uh, Sasha, did you have anything else from the village? Why, why yes, we do. Um, no, I, I just think, you know, this is, this is just to the point in terms of, um, you know, we don't want a dependent relationship on creative New Zealand. And so, you know, we, we would like to see CNZ spending more time really investigating that. And, um, you know, if that's the goal, what kind of investment is being placed in, in these kinds of conversations and exploring that to ensure that we are up, up the front. Um, and then another, the other uh, conversation that we had was around uh, not wanting a us, us and them relationship with Creative New Zealand. Uh, and, and we think a lot of that comes down to, well, there's, there's multiple layers to that. One is for Creative New Zealand to be more aware of the power dynamic between us. Um, and that's come up a lot over the last couple of days, is that we've been invited to be honest, um, be, be brutally honest, uh, but there is a lot of fear of, of coming forward and, and, being, and, and sharing our truth in this space. There's still a concern that if I say something in this room that that could potentially affect a, a funding outcome for me. So, so that power dynamic doesn't disappear just because we're being told to be, you know, that you can be honest. So we'd like to see Creative New Zealand um, yeah, be, be more aware of that dynamic, be, be more honest with themselves about that power dynamic, um, and, and then let's look to uh, shifting that relationship into a us and us, because uh, you are us. Uh, we've got practicing artists working within Creative New Zealand. You are a part of us. 
but at the moment the perception and the comms kind of between us is th there is that separation. So um, I think Creative New Zealand being able to really have a look at that and uh, yeah, look at who are you representing? Are you representing us or are you representing the Crown? And where, where that, which was commented on earlier, uh, where that difficulty arises for you in that relationship and be honest about that with us. And maybe that can also, you know, support shifting that dynamic. Um, Sasha, can I just ask you a quick question? What does an us and us relationship look like? Well, considering this was a, a group discussion, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm just I'm just yeah, just probing for a detail. There. We would love specific yeah. answers that yeah. we can take really quickly and implement it. You've got the ears of the council right here. Instead of, I'm going to just um, encourage a. Um, the well, I think I, I, get, I get what you're asking yeah, yeah, for. Yeah. You're wanting some practical outcomes and some specifics that you can then go away and do. But I, I think that there needs to be uh, an assessment within Creative New Zealand separately from, you know, that doesn't Perfect. actually involve us, of you having a look at your own structure Perfect. and being honest about that. Thank you, um, thank you. And, and then having, there's definitely been a call for much more regular meetings with us. There's been calls for, you know, effectively a Creative New Zealand roadshow um, going around the country and actually... Uh, uh, meeting people face to face, introducing yourselves to people who don't know you, because that's yes. that's definitely been a call over the last couple of days, um, and as well as actively participating uh, in these art forms as well, so that you are always coming with true experience of what we're doing, and it's the most up to date experience. You know, we see this in the in the tertiary sector quite often, is that. Um, you go into that sector, you're a teacher, but then you stop practicing and then actually you become really removed from the sector. So, you know, really encouraging and allowing space for your staff to truly be able to be artists because that matters when they are that connected. They are part of this community and then they are truly speaking for that community when they're back inside of that building. Um, Uh, can't remember how this does that does that sort of answer that, that question? That is perfect. Um, and, and then the, the 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 last part of that dynamic as well, and in, in terms of power dynamic, is also being able to recognise the dynamic within our own sector as well. So there's um, obviously been a really strong call for uh, you know where are where are our younger artists being represented in this conversation? So can we have a radical look at the way that we operate this summit going forward and work out actually what is a, a, a space that they are going to be able to engage in? And then a call for their own, and that might look like they have their own, you know, <laughs> that they have a totally separate space so mm. that we, yeah, we recognise that power dynamic within our own community um, that if there are multiple voices in one space, there are voices who just won't speak up in those spaces. I think that might be, maybe that's enough from our village. Are we, are we yeah. comfortable with that much? Yeah, cool. All right, yeah, thank you. Perfect. Uh, I'm just going to ask Jacob to speak next. Well, here we are, all here. <laughs> this is the second time that I was here in, in Te Papa. I was on stage. But right now, it speaks from the heart of Creative New Zealand and a big family. Um, we are all together in, in, in the same page. But in the same page, we do have a waka. And this waka will drive through in you know, five, five years to the future. And our future is going to be quite different between the, between the application or the money. I don't care about the money. I care about all of you here. Like, we are all going to represent who you are. We are all others. We can create art. Connect by the city. That's who we are. So not me, no, not me, but to you over there. Um, thank you guys thank for letting me speak uh, today. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Jacob for president. <laughs> security, security. Uh, Kia ora koutou. Um, just really quickly from my group, um, 
one, there was Fakaro shared that the question and the way that it is posed uh, puts the onus back on us. And we thought that just picking up on that un unbalanced power relationship, uh, uh, it's really important that the questions that are asked are ones that have been scrutinized beforehand so that they allow uh, maybe more generative Fakaro to arise. So um, just wanted to pick that up and honor what was shared with me um, from one of my group members. Um, in terms of what ways do you want to work with Creative NZ, we really, what was coming across was that we really want to be able to have clearer comms in the lead up to summits like this. Uh, yes, we've been, uh, what's been shared across the last three days is we're very aware of who's not in the room. Uh, we had people from the tertiary education space, from their community spaces, saying that it's not good enough that we've only just heard about this summit, um, I think, in the last month, and that had there just been a uh, tightening up of comms there, that would have been uh, potentially more beneficial for us and the many villages that we represent. Um, I caught quotes, the tail does not wag the dog, uh, so there's a chance for us to rework language on funding and relationships, and we wonder what that might look like. Uh, we are really keen to work on breaking the continuum between heritage and contemporary artists, because we understand that um, simply dividing ourselves between heritage arts and contemporary arts is a colonial thing. You're a Pacific artist, it is your ngafa, it's your whakapapa, it's your hohoko that makes you a Pacific artist. Um, and one of our group members said it's really important that they see our art not from the Western lens but from the Polynesian, Micronesian, Melanesian way. And so we wonder whether there's an opportunity there uh, for our community to be able to um, amplify the critical ways in which we can critically love not just our artists but our art making processes. Uh, we also thought that there are ways in which Creative NZ, um, in terms of helping level that uh, unbalanced power dynamic is it's Creative NZ's uh, job to check capacity. Some of us only have capacity to be informed, others of us have more capacity and more energy to be collaborators, and there are people, uh, I think, in the room, but definitely in the group, who have uh, different energies and different uh, things that they wanted to call out into the space. And so I felt like from our group there was this big uh, kind of whittle for CNZ to go post the summit to ask what is the ongoing relationship do we, that we want to have with CNZ? Because some of us merely just want to be informed and we just want to be the crazy, crazy artists on the, in the corner and make, and that's fine. Others of us, though, we thrive in spaces like this. So it's about how do we build strength uh, and work to our strengths, right? Um, I want to circle back also to the provocation you asked around what is an us and us relationship. Um, a brother who tutors at the drama school uh, was saying that there is a very big disconnect between the realities that, um, and I don't just mean young artists, but artists who are in the tertiary education space, who are young in their practice, uh, between them and Creative NZ. And I think that that's a big theme that's been um, picked up. My, what I, what my offering to that question is um, I come from not just an education background, but from an advertising background. I worked at Creative NZ. We do co-design. That is our jam. I wonder whether Creative NZ has the capacity to hold an intergenerational creative jam where they go and do the Creative NZ Roadshow, and an element of that Roadshow is they go and uh, open up a community house and say, for this weekend, we have a whole lot of our master heritage artists sitting here in the corner for you to come and access, and in return, you share back your work, right? Um, I think that there's a lot of potential for these big ideas to actually be crunched down into workable solutions, uh, mm -hmm. but we can't be asked of this sort of stuff on Palangi time. Um, and that's another thing that I think in terms of workable solutions, thank you, I hear a clap. I think in terms of workable solutions, we're Pacific people and yet we're doing this in a very Western way. I'm speaking, you're listening. But if this was really uh, made for, by us, with us in mind, in my mind, the summit, all of us would be sitting here weaving and listening. We wouldn't be passively listening, right? There is knowledge here. Thank you. Um, and I think from an educational standpoint uh, and, and from an experience as, as, um, as someone at the summit, I want a Creative NZ that always leaves us more hopeful. I want a Creative NZ that always leaves me want dreaming wider. I do not want to leave feeling like my cup has been poured 
and that I have been giving my strategic advice for free. And that's not just coming from me, that's coming from so many people that I've heard across this room. So when I, when I come back to these beautiful things about how do we decolonize these structures, it's actually really easy. We don't need to overcomplicate it. And the answers are actually back in our cultures. And I, I scrutinize and I question and I wonder, why not? Because I was here back in 2018 and I remember that feedback shared was, we did want to hear more about each other, which um, I ended up being the stand-in facilitator for my group and I prioritized Whaka Whanaungatanga. It, uh, it's potentially heartbreaking to me that Whaka Whanaungatanga in this summit is not budgeted in. We should be unapologetic about relationship building. Mm -hmm. if, that, if, if the biggest strategic movement is we prioritize our relationships with each other beyond just outcomes, that to me will be radical enough. We shouldn't be on Thalami time, we should be on ancestral time. Uh, my little Apita, Apita, now stop talking and pass the mic because I just talk, 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 stop. talk. <laughs> I don't know how I follow that. Just um, read your phone, another village I'm note. Perfect. Um, <laughs> uh, my name is Tamika Vahatao. Uh, I haven't met a lot of you, so I will introduce myself briefly. Uh, I am a multidisciplinary artist. I initially trained uh, in production design and sculpture for prosthetics, uh, and then I flipped that and went to, and studied acting at Toifakari, uh, New Zealand Drama School, or Takura Toifakari, or Atero. Um, I worked a lot in physical theatre and visual theatre, and then when moving to Auckland, flipped to screen more uh, recently, uh, and I now run my own production company, which is more independent work, and concurrently a, a uh, company that works and makes prior, primarily online uh, in social media spheres, uh, and we parody gaming, which is a very different uh, world and realm to all of the above. Um, our Talanoa as a group, significantly reflected the journey of what you have just shared. So I, but I will um, honor the words of my team and refer to the firm. <laughs> uh, our people value our people. Uh, so we want to see you and be seen by you. Um, we value genuine community engagement and wonder what that would look like in the structures that we know. In our time, on our time, island style Talanoa and perhaps with a few follow or two. Um, Building on the roadshow idea raised yesterday, where CNZ would travel around the local, national, and international communities and institutions to address the desire for reconnection, accessibility, and visibility to and of CNZ. Uh, an event could be created around these tours to bring alongside MB, Ministry of Pacific Peoples, etc. So we're fully embracing the potential of these connections and moments. Uh, perhaps it includes a United Nations Pacific Summit uh, for both youth and senior practitioners, uh, creating a safe space for all cultures and peoples to Talanoa and then come back to discuss and advance forward, which I think is the operative part. Um, we can see this encouraging the normalization of exchange Talanoa, genera gener uh, generational and institutionally, et cetera, share and exchange of skills of our artists and artistries, again, highlighting things that have already been raised, but re uh, reiterating it. Um, also something that came up significantly was uh, alternate methods of application that allow us to actually highlight our individual artistries and skills, including varied language and mediums and catering for the tour communities. Thanks. Mahalo, thank you. Hi, I'm Mel. I feel like I'm about to spit some bars. Um, no, Mom, you can if you want to. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I have the floor. Um, so just to introduce myself, I'm Mel. I'm the Creative Pacific Coordinator at Massey. Um, I am an artist in my own right in terms of fine arts, painting, uh, drawing, activation. I'm moving into film and theater. Um, I would class myself as an emerging artist. Um, and so I'm very happy to be here and be very loud because um, closed mouths do not get fed. Um, so in terms of what my village has been talking about, it's very mimicking what has already been said, but I'm going to say it again. Um, there is a huge power dynamic in terms of this relationship. Um, I think we are kind of disillusioned in the fact that um, we can have a relationship in a way um, because this is directly transactional. You give us money, we use the money. Um, in terms of 
ways that we want to work with Crave New Zealand, I think there needs to be a change in the way um, structurally, but also um, kind of in this way of like recognizing the power dynamic and maybe having the summit at a marae, um, maybe having a weaving circle like you've said, um, because this setup is a speaker and a crowd. Um, and like, you know, circles would be more like uh, recognizing the power dynamic in this situation. Um, what ways do you want to work with Crave New Zealand? I think there's also a need for a lot of transparency, specifically we were talking about um, in other um, places in our work that, uh, to talk about specifics, we were talking about that fact that they have like an ecosystem map of funding in, in Tamaki. Um, in terms of the pamphlets that we got at the start of um, the summit, they were really good in terms of informing us on what you were trying to do in the past couple of years, but there needs to be deeper transparency into, into what was funded and did that align with what you were trying to do in the first place. Um, and a huge breakdown on the, the uh, budgeting and things like that. Um, in terms of the application process, we talked about possibly changing the way the website is being used. Um, say, for example, someone has gone through and applied for funding multiple times. Um, maybe there could be a change to the website in terms of creating a profile where there's a history of all of the applications instead of having to resubmit the cover letter and all of the stuff that we, you already have received from us, um, having that on the, the profile and the history of your relationship with the applicant. Um, and a real question is, do you know your community? Um, and how well do you know that community? And um, do you have a pulse on what's happening at that point in time? Um, also, uh, we have a huge issue with the word decolonize. You cannot decolonize a colonial institution. It is not possible. Um, just within its uh, creation. I think re-indigenize might be a better word, um, but it is an uphill battle, I think, in terms of funding, um, trusting certain people to build their own kaupapa and their own seat and table so that they can sit in it, irrespective of Create New Zealand and the institutions that exist, because you cannot decolonize it. You either have to burn it down or start your own thing in your own, in your own way. Um, also, just there needs to be more of a human touch um, in terms of the relationship between Crave New Zealand and the applicants. Um, the internet has kind of cut off that human relationship. The summit has been a good step in the right direction, but in terms of like the way things work on a day-to-day -day basis, there needs to be an opportunity to be able to talk to a human being and not a website and um, keep in touch and keep up to date with what's happening in the community and the, the local community, domestic, international. Um, and yeah, there's just a lack of intimacy, but then I question whether or not we need intimacy in a business transactional relationship. Um, you know? Um, yeah, and just a bit of a more exerted effort in terms of um, reaching out and having a human interaction. Anything else from the village? Yeah, is there anything else? Did I miss anything? Did I miss something? Yes, yes. So um, we kind of talked about um, in the induction into the summit, we didn't see written down what the ethics of Creative New Zealand is. Um, we saw the PO, but we don't actually know what you're about. Um, that wasn't really outlined to us at all. Um, and I would suffice to say that it might not also be on the website. Yeah, no. Yeah, we just kind of don't understand your ethics and so we don't know what that power dynamic is in literal terms. Um, and we would like to see that at the next summit or just added to the website or put into place. And kind of the ethics of your team um, and your bigger bosses, and what we're dealing with. Um, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Malo? Short. Okay. <laughs>
Um, I really just wanted to, I guess, echo that. Um, Creative NZ needs to master the art of showing up. Um, yeah, I really just needed to nail that point uh, for um, someone in our village who shared that they're not out there on their grassroots communities in the ways that matter to them. Um, and trust is not built in big sweeping moments. It's built in, every, in tiny moments every day. I wonder what a Creative NZ looks like that chooses to show up for us every day, whatever that looks like, wherever we are, rather than us having to come to you to ask for money. I think what Mal was talking about, that's a very transactional relationship. We're not transactional people, we're transformative. Work. <laughs> okay, everybody. Can I just quickly, um, <laughs> sorry. Apparently we were supposed to answer the question, but uh, we answered the question. I didn't know that everyone else had additional answers to that. So just to make sure that there is a bit of equity in the response. Can I just uh, speak to your point of we cannot decolonize a system? It depends on the lens that you are looking at a system from. I am someone who grew up in Dianganu'u. I breathe and eat and speak Dianganu'u. A system is made up of people. So if you can upscale the people within their own whakapapa, you can place people in there who represent you in a way, you may never change the system, but you decolonize the mentality that forms the rituals and ethics of a system. Now, let me look at Creative New Zealand. Creative New Zealand and its current council, if I were to suggest a change for them in how I can work with them, we use a model that we currently use for Sounds NZ in terms of the Pacific. We place people in the advisory council that are not all artists, but are all leaders in different factions of our lives. We have a scholar who's not a musician, but can advise me in the ways of how to navigate various places. This is very much a Moana model, because a long time ago, before we set sail, on these wakas, not everyone was a sailor. We had a master sailor, we had a kava, we had a priest, we had the Fife Owls, we also had the leaders. And what I'd like to see from that council is a reflection of people that could help decolonize the outcomes of such a colonized system. We do recognize we live in a land and a culture that is dominated by Fa'apapalangi, but I have a choice. Just because English is there doesn't mean I give it value. I can use it as a tool, but it doesn't determine the way I think. Additional to that is I would like Creative New Zealand to acknowledge the fact that we had, and rightfully so, we had the pofiri. Uh, I am a supporter of Tangata Whenua. We are here to empower them in the hope that as they are blessed, we too, the Tuakana relationship, are also blessed. So as we had the pofiri, may I advise you to also do not shy away from the complexity of the Ava ceremony. Ava is the only thing that sin it every single person that is on this stage, in the room, right about now. It is the drinks of the gods, it is the only roots that connect us no matter where we go. So as we start talking about decolonizing, remember, your lens, it may be difficult. To mine, decolonization is a word, but it's not a determinant. Um, so I just want to put that out there as we have, because we're all from different lens, and nobody is wrong, nobody is right. It is our own truth. So thank you for sharing that. But I just want to say, decolonization, it's already begun. And let me put this forward. For many years, those who know me, I hate the term Pacific Islander. I'm not a Pacific Islander. I'm a Samoan Nguyen. I'm not a fruit salad. I'm the best of both worlds. All right? Secondly, those who also know me know that I advocate to remove and abolish these three words because we talk about decolonization, yet we still use them. Polynesia, Micronesia, Melanesia. These are Papalangi terminologies to define so they could accept who we were. But we've always been the Moana. We are children of the biggest synod in the universe. You can play a song from Africa, doesn't matter where, sub-Saharan, North South, you know it's African. You play something from the Moana, it'll take you forever and a day to guess. 
which of these houses, the Cook Island house, the Tahitian house, the Al Maori, Hamoa, or Tonga, we are so rich. So if it pleases the courts and those who paid for me to come here, can we begin? If we are talking about getting our waka the right way, let's not be the mistake of the man from Turkey who took a cup to be made in China, broke the cup, gave it to the Chinese, and guess how the Chinese made the cup? They made it broken as they were given. So if we are here today as these great thought leaders, align it correctly so that a hundred years from today, we will all adhere to the vision of Jacob. We are on that one waka. All right. Thank you, everybody. Yep. Um, thank you. Please give a round of applause to our esteemed panel of village coordinators. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Guys, we're almost there. As of course, the books are never closed with your kōrero comments and fakaro. So if you think of something that you want to desperately share with CNZ, you can do that at any time. Now I'm going to get off the stage and hand it over to Makarita. Thank you. Thank you for that final talanoa and uh, beautiful uh, feedback. And it was good to listen uh, to our facilitators. Oh. The, the report backs. So I'm here. We're 10 minutes away from uh, closing our 2022 Pacific Summit, so we're counting down now. Uh, I'm here. I'm here with my brother. Come here, David. <laughs> uh, David Panett is Senior Manager Strategy and Game. I've been learning from him. Uh, he worked in health for 12 years and uh, before as like the only Pacific staff member at Greater New Zealand for many, many years, which is why often we can't just get everywhere and do road shows. Mm -hmm. uh, this work for the strategy has only been a couple of years of new staff as well. So David's been there learning from him, helping to shape our Pacific Arts strategy because he knows some of that work. So now I'm beside him and, and, vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> and servicing our Arts Council, as you can see, uh, that are becoming looking a bit more like what Aotearoa should look like. Uh, of course, we've also got an Asian community. So just a quickly, uh, we just want to just give a next steps after the Pacific Arts Summit. I did this update yesterday, so. Yeah, great. Um, just on a personal note, thanks so much. For, it's been amazing hearing uh, the conversation, the thoughts uh, from the side. It may not look like I was listening, but I was busy typing, so it was going in and it was going down as well. So. Um, that's going to help us so much as we look to the future and, and uh, for me to support the team with uh, pulling the new strategy together as well, so that's awesome. Um, so lots to process, lots to uh, reflect on and absorb, so thank you for your input and comments. Um, we kind of go into that space now of pulling the, everyone's thoughts and, and feedback together. Um, to have a first crack at what the, the new strategy will look like. Um, the, There'll be updates to the Arts Council, both at the December meetings uh, and uh, into February as well in the new year, where we hope to give them something a little bit more concrete on paper. Um, so that's keeping them and the working group as well of Arts Council members who are uh, um, overseeing and guiding this process through a lot more discussion uh, with them over the, the coming weeks and months as well. Um, as we start to develop up what the new strategy will look like. Mm. So February 2023 next year is a draft uh, priority areas of action. We'll go to the Arts Council governance meeting uh, for their input and then uh, a final uh, strategy for the next five years, 2023 to 2028, will go to the Arts Council for approval in April next year. So between that time, there will be uh, another online survey uh, going out. This is the process we followed last time, which we worked really well. Uh, and we got ourselves a beautiful focus strategy for this current, uh, the current one that we're, well, we're in at the moment and implementing. Between uh, May and June next year, uh, there will be an implementation plan. And looking at some of those high level uh, priority areas for action. 
So with an implementation plan, there are targets, there are things to do, and you could see from the report back that uh, Creative New Zealand presented on day one of the summit from many years ago before, a sum, uh, uh, before there was a strategy, Marilyn talked about a budget of 130,000. When I started at Creative New Zealand in 2011, the budget was 500,000. Uh, in the last financial year, it's gone up to $9 million. So this is not, once as an artist coming into an institution, it's a different type of challenge for me having marched in the streets with a poster, I'm an activist, it's a different work going in as an artist to work and come in in an institution to make a difference to serve the community where I'm from. And uh, I want to thank our Pacific Arts team uh, and the executive team who've allowed us to go from A to B and progress the work that we need to do. There's a huge gap we need to do for many facets of our community. Uh, thank you, Jacob, Lucy, uh, Tawi Lili, Pati Umanga is not here. And the winner of the 22 Arts Pacifica Tour Award is here, Ululau, with his mom and dad, Nunu and Temu. Malo Ululau. <laughs> well, we've got our awards tonight at 7 p.m. So our teams are moving into organizing that. Uh, so that's the next progress, but I want you to know uh, uh, there's some work in terms of giving up time uh, when, you, when you're a public servant, uh, there's only so much you can do. I can't, and because our community's grown so much, there are events and Pacific Arts all around the world, all, uh, all around the country. It's just such a busy space. So bear of us and we hear you and we'll try to do better in that space as well. I hope that gives you an idea, but otherwise we're available on email, a phone call, a Zoom, a Talanoa, uh, further feedback at pacificarts at creativenz.govt.nz. If you follow the Pacific Arts Facebook page, you can come and comment in there. We have an office in Wellington, office in Auckland, so you can pop in, have a cup of tea, have a cup of coffee, and Talanoa with us. I particularly want to thank Jacinda Stowers and Pacifica Mamas and Tuaratini because As part of our strategy, we invited about 15 heritage artists who have quietly sat through this and listened to the Talanoa of the 2022. These mamas and papas have kept our traditions alive quietly in their communities, in their community halls, and they have sat and listened to this piece quietly. Uh, and there's so much wisdom, and we'll follow up and have a Talanoa with them. Uh, and we have Two of them are, are sitting over there who are Katai Taya uh, from our Kiribati community and Louisa Humphrey. These are some of our elders. We've been hosting them for a couple of years, so uh, sorry for a couple of days here to bring their wisdom. Joanna Monolangi there. Uh, apart from our chairs, of, of uh, these are the people who've walked the talk and, and done the work and activated within the communities why we're here today with this work. Uh, and uh, thank you to Mama Mi'i over there. Our, our band is gone. Uh, thank you to all our elders. Thank you to all the, the courage of the young ones who've been here, who've, who've been vocal and spoken their truth because uh, we're in Aotearoa now and there's new voices that we need to open the pathway through. Uh, thank you to uh, the Arts Council allowing this to happen. Thank you to my beautiful Pacifica Queens. I uh, love you all. These are what we call ourselves Pacific staff. Hashtag uh, Pacific Queens, uh, Queens Machine. Uh, you're amazing. Thank you to all our staff for making this happen. To Margot, who's uh, here, to all our helpers uh, for, uh, for making this summit happen. Uh, safe travels home for all of you. And I'll just give last word to Karen Rangi to close the summit. Yeah.
ko te whahine nei no te whairoa, te pā tititi, te pā horohoro e te tū taki taki whānanga. Te tua ki mani iki, te tua ki rakanga, e pū ai au, he pū kere kere, ko he tatai mai, ko he mama mai, ko a mama o ke. I've been a member of the Arts Council for, showing my age now, since 2014, and I've been chair since April 2021. Um, it's been the most, <clears throat> it's probably been the hardest job I've had to do for $35,000 a year. And um, it's also been one of the most satisfying. So just FYI, in New Zealand, don't go into governance for the money. Um, but I really want to put a last plug out there to say if we're ever going to change systems and processes, we need our people's voices at every level of decision making. And I know I said it earlier on. So we celebrate that Carmel's our minister. We celebrate that Laulu's about to go into be CEO of Minister of Arts, Culture and Heritage. We celebrate the people that we have uh, in this room. But some days it's still not enough. And so hence the importance of conversations like these together where we can articulate good, bad or otherwise, um, what the future success looks like for all of us. So I thank all of you for your time. I really want to thank too, um, I want to cast your mind right over to the corner of that room to our ladies sitting on the table there quietly for the last three days, organising things in the background. Thank you, I can see Renee, Merania, everybody there. Um, I want to give a shout out to our comms team at the back there who are furiously sending out messages. Thank you, Jazz and team. I want to thank our very patient videographer at the back and our sound team uh, over here, uh, as well as the CNZ team. And I'd like to thank our host, Te Papa, who have fed us, watered us, and housed us for the last two and a half days. Um, it's been a real soul-feeding exercise for, for us. And for many of us, the last uh, uh, act for today will be to celebrate our successful Pacific artists tonight. So thank you again to all of you. Mei taki maata, kurereka, ngao, polia. And um, I'd like to call upon uh, Mama's Kaitaita and Louisa to come to the stage. And I'm, I'm saying that greeting in Giribas, which is normally what we say when we are greeting you, but in, in reality, it actually means good health to you all. So it's appropriate that I say Kamna Melody to you all as we part our ways. But before we do, I'd like to say our sincere thanks to Creative New Zealand, to all of us for being here. And, and making this summit a really interesting and informative and hopefully guiding us in our futures with our upcoming children. I think when we had our meeting in our little group here, we were asked to say what animal we would like to be if we were given the chance. And a lot of us say turtle and some sea, um, but uh, mostly there were birds. And I think that's what we are. We are birds that we've traveled from our islands far away. We've come to settle in New Zealand. And we're here with a purpose to guide our young ones that are in New Zealand growing up as New Zealanders. But deep down, they are, their roots are from Tuvalu, from Samoa, from Cook Island, from Kiribati. And to nurture them to know who they really are. So I thank, I thank you all for your contribution. I thank you, Creative New Zealand, for the, the purpose that you do to enable us to do that dream that we want to guide our young people to know who they are. And in, in the art, that's exactly where they are. It in, embodies the language. It embodies your well-being. Yeah, it embodies everything, and I think it's so vital that we meet like this to carry on and support one another. Thank you all.
who knows, maybe we will meet again in not so long a distant future. Kam Rabak. Kam Rabak. We just finish with a, a closing prayer, which I will say in Kiribati. Sabo berakin dadar. Skaraboko or sky tauko there to a wind bong a yo, or can one I cast and digging on bong I ca I cast and no. Our abuvusi, Bokona Ronira, Akona Mimena Rora, Nan Naradai Esabanga, Mana Koyai. Our Kinira, our Mimena Rora, our Akoi, our Tangira, when a Mena Rora, Yon Kawairana. Amen. And we, before we leave you, we would just like to say our Kiribati, we say, Arabeuni Kiribati, that's our garland we have. But in words, we will say, De Maori, De Roy, De Tabumor. So good and health, health, prosperity. And, 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 yeah, and good luck to the futures. <laughs> Something like that. Just finally, before we let you all head off, um, safe travels home, and I, I just wanted to also say a thank you, a very big thank you to our interpreters who have been making our conversations available uh, for people who are watching in, and um, to say thank you too to our online audience for being here with us. Travel safe, everybody. Thank you.